Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Boring Objects. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now the object, oh, the object, the object of this Boring Objects podcast is basically to allow you to relax by me talking about some random thing and I just talk and it's boring it's supposed to be boring it gives you an opportunity to I guess it'd be a bit of a distraction from your life. Gives you a chance to maybe relax. Perhaps even fall asleep. Whatever. Whatever you feel the need or, you know, you wish to use this for. May just be... might be enjoyable I don't know so you know it's just me chatting I've done a few of these so far I'm not quite sure how many if I'm honest let me have a look yeah I've made 26 of these recordings so this is the 27th So I thought today I would talk about punch bags. Never talked about punch bag before. Well, I have, but not not on here, not on this podcast. And yeah, so that's going to be the subject or the object of this particular conversation. Yeah. So I hope you're well. Hope you're okay. Hope you're able to just, you know, get yourself comfortable sitting in a comfortable chair, maybe lying down. And I'm just going to waffle on for a little while, telling you all about the punch bags that I've had in my life. Now, for those that don't know what a punch bag is, it's a a training tool that people, boxers, martial artists would use. It's it's basically just a big bag filled with, I don't know what's inside. It depends. I mean, if you buy a punch bag from a shop or from a sports shop, then it would be filled already with whatever material they have in there. So I don't know. But my first punch bags, in fact, um, I'm going to include speed balls in this as well, which is another thing which stands up and it's like a ball and you punch it and boxers use those, although they're not very high, not very tall. But my dad had one, so I used to play with it when I was about, well, when I was a child. And I used to used to have this like, quite springy, so it'd come back, so you'd punch it and it'd come back. But there was a, a little bit of a board that you could stand on. Now, I've never seen one since then, but that was that was quite good. And I used to stand on it and just... You punch it and then you dodge out of the way so the ball didn't hit you in the head and well that was very light. Almost like a football really. So I used to enjoy playing on that. I didn't get my first well, I had to go on a punch bag when I took up kickboxing when I was about fourteen. 
and it was a uh, the kickboxing didn't last long it was a neighbor basically my next door neighbor wanted to train with an adult who lived across the road who was a kickboxer and he was he worked at the american forces so he was on the american base i see he was probably in his 30s or whatever and so I can't I knew him I knew his kid because his son was a few years younger than me but he was the neighbor so I kind of knew the other kids around so my next door neighbor who was he was a couple of years younger than me but probably bigger than me actually but he was he was younger and he he knocked on my door and said, "Do you wanna do you wanna do some kickboxing?" I said, "Well, I'm watching cartoons." He said, "Not now, not right now. I mean, um, on Saturday morning." I said, I "Don't know." He said, "Come over," and you know, I went over and spoke to the man, and because I'd I'd met him before, but only through his son. And he said, basically, he needed someone to spar with. Because he, he didn't want to just teach one person. He needed someone else around the same kind of size or age to spar. So I said, yeah, okay. So that Saturday morning, I went along. And there was this gym it was on the docks and it was uh, how was, was it on the docks it was on an American base anyway so it was near the docks I think um, because after the second world war the American the Ameri there was a lot of Americans stayed in England around on these different um, bases as they did around Europe as well I think and probably in America and um, so I went along and there was this gym and it was quite nice, it was quite big, there was punch bags so I kind of had my first little taste on a punch bag which was quite fun and then you know we did lots of stretching and taught us some moves and some kicks and punches and got us all literally completely covered with safety gear you know leg leg protectors uh body protectors head protectors everything so it's all very safe but quite restrictive you know difficult to move around with all that stuff on and then me and my neighbor had a punch up which is weird because i always got on with him and it was strange to have a fight with someone that I had no issue with. The annoying thing about it was my neighbour, the, the adult who was teaching us, was shouting at him to sort of, um, almost supporting him. Come on, Mikey, you can do it, go on. I don't know if his name was Mikey or not, I can't remember. And that annoyed me. <laughs> that annoyed me. It's like, not as much as that motorbike that just gone past. So I didn't quite like that because it wasn't fair. And I didn't want the person teaching me to be against me, if you, if that makes sense. So I went, I went a couple of times, but I didn't really like it. Maybe it's because it was just the two of us and... and I didn't really feel there was anyone in my corner. But it was fun. The thing I really struggled with was the stretching really hurt. You know, and that's just normal, but it really, it was proper full-on stretching. And I've never done stretching before. Not really, not really, you know. I mean, at school, maybe a bit of touch your toes, um cough no I'm joking um, but it's it's not much um, 
proper stretching and it was painful. But I kind of, you know, I got a little bit of a taste for it. You know, I, I did enjoy the sparring and I didn't get hurt. I mean, it's practically impossible to get hurt with all that protective gear on. And then I, I was at school, and this is exact, just around exactly the same kind of time, within like a few weeks. And my friend, a good friend at school, said to me that he was going to the local karate club that evening. It was a Tuesday or a Thursday evening because it was open twice a week on a Tuesday and a Thursday. I think it started about seven till nine, something like that. And and the reason he was going is because his brother went. His brother was uh, the year below us. I didn't know his brother at this point and it was weird because the toughest kid in the year below us was kind of the toughest kid in the school and he was there he he was going to the karate as well he was best friends with my friend's brother they were both a couple of the tough kids but I didn't know didn't know him uh, his brother I ended up being good friends with him Anyway, I went along to the. I said to my friend, Can I come? Please, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I, can I, can I please, please, please. And he said, Okay. So I went along. And it, all we did was just watch. We went along, we sat down, and it was in a gymnasium, but not in our school, it was in a different school. So there's a bit of rivalry between the two schools. Yeah, at this karate club, there was people from both schools there. So I quite liked that. I quite um, I liked getting to know people from other from the other school. So I didn't have that rivalry anymore. If that makes sense. Not not that a rivalry was with me anyway. But once I got to know the other kids at the other school, it was I almost felt like I was at both schools. You know, I felt quite comfortable. So me and my friend, we just went and we sat and we watched. And one thing was a bit weird is seeing this this kid who was a year below me, but he was like the toughest kid, not just in that year, but kind of almost in the school. And I'd known, I I didn't know him, know him, know him. I knew of him and he knew of me. We'd like, we'd say hello to each other sometimes because he was good friends with my na- my next door neighbours. But it was very strange to see him there because he was new. He, he didn't even have a gi, so he was just doing it in his tracksuit bottoms and t-shirt. So he was... He'd only just started himself, and so he wasn't very good. I mean, no one's very good when they first start. And it was really weird to see him doing that when I knew that he could probably beat everyone up anyway without karate. It was it was just weird. Um, but he stopped doing it. He 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 finished. I think that was like his last night. He didn't go back. But my friend's brother really loved it. And my friend, like we watched it for the whole evening for two hours. Then we left. Uh, we came back with his brother. I'm not sure if I got a lift or just walked. I can't remember. It wasn't a long, a long distance. It's basically just one straight road. Uh, kind of. And I fell in love with karate. I fell in love. 
and my friend who I went with, he decided to go as well. So we both started on exactly the same night. So I think we might have been there on the Tuesday night. And then we started on the Thursday night. And I, you know, so I went every Tuesday and Thursday pretty much without fail. He, my friend, he left. He stopped doing it after a few months. But his brother stayed. And his brother was like really good and I guess I became friends with him and boy, everyone else really that was there and the so at that time because you might be thinking oh what's this got to do with punch bags that's when I decided to you know train at home so it wasn't long after starting there that I started going to the gym. And it all kind of coincided at the same time, roughly, because I was walking with my friend. I don't know where we'd been, but we were just walking around the corner. Just, you know, probably seven, eight minutes from where I lived at the time. And there was this man unloading a van full of carpet but he was struggling a bit because he was just on his own it wasn't that the carpet was particularly heavy it was just it was long so he couldn't really you know and I think me and my friend or I did or he did I said do you, do you need a hand and he said oh okay or no actually I think I offered to help him if I got free membership to the gym. Because I asked him what he was doing and he said, oh, it's a new gym here. And we're opening up next week and we're just moving all the stuff in. But we have to move the carpet in first before the machines because it's just logical, isn't it, I guess? Unless you put the machines down and then just cut the carpet around in the shape of the machine. I don't know. But he didn't like that idea. And, I, and he said, if you give us a hand, yeah, you can have free membership. Because so I explained to him that we were just kids. We were only 14. So I didn't really have any money. And he said, I don't need that much information. I said, okay, don't need to be rude. He said, rude? Rude? I said, yeah. He said, oh, okay. And I said, uh I'll give you a hand then we'll do it so we did both me and my friend helped him with the carpet emptied the van and put all the carpet some of it downstairs some of it upstairs and it took a couple of hours and then the next week I went back and I started using the gym for free which is nice so I was kind of because I wanted to get I wanted to get muscular. I mean, it didn't really happen, but well, a little bit. But I wanted to, you know, get fitter and stronger for karate. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to put any weight on. I just had to. I was very, very skinny when I was a kid. And for all the way up to really pretty much the age of 25 I was just skinny and even after that I still wasn't big until I didn't really put any weight on until I was 30 or 29 30, yeah 29 so I started going to the gym and then I thought oh I want to get some weights now my dad had this big like a conservatory uh, building at the bottom of the garden where he kept all of his tools because he was he was a tradesman so he had a lot of stuff that he used to keep in there he had an office and all that it was a big old thing big quite a big place not big but quite big if you know what I mean it was it wasn't a shed you know it was, it was a proper 
kind of building. Like an outhouse, I suppose. It did have a toilet in there. Anyway, he had, he used one part for the office and he used some of it for equipment. But there was a bit of space in there. So I said to my dad, is it okay if I use it for my weights? I want to get some weights. And he said, uh, you didn't need to say that twice. Just, you know, the fact that you said you wanted to use it for your weights meant I assumed that you were going to get some weights. I said, why Why are you picking up on that? I'm just, I'm just asking. And he said, I don't know. It's just been a rough day. Uh, I said, oh, fair enough. I said, well, what, what's happened? He said, I don't want to talk about it. I said, well, why mention it then? Why mention it? He said, you just, what's, what's your problem? I said, I don't have a problem. Well, I did stump my toe earlier at school. He said, oh, does it hurt? I said, of course it hurts. Why would I mention it if it didn't hurt? He said, oh, this conversation's not going anywhere, is it? I said, no, it's not really. He said, I hope you're not going to talk about it on your podcast. I said, Dad, I told you before, I'm 14. I don't start the podcast until I'm 26 or 36, at least. He said, oh, okay. I said, besides, the internet doesn't exist yet. Oh, I'll keep forgetting. And so he said, yeah. So I, I went and got myself some weights bit by bit because I had a part-time job. So I had to kind of save up. So over the over the weeks, um, you know, I got a, a barbell and then I got some weights, got some dumbbells and I just bought them all individually, a curl bar. Um, so that was kind of the main weights that I had. And then, um, but before, around that time, I said to my dad, I want to get a punch bag. And he said, oh. And what we did is he, I got myself a punch bag and he gave me a punch bag. And the bag was basically a, like a kit bag, like an army kit bag. It was big. And he filled it with straw, I think, straw or clothes. It was, you know, so it was it was light. And then the other bag that I bought, he filled it with sand. And he put a, a screw swivel thing in the ceiling, um, which turned around, you know, with the bag, so it didn't cause problems. And... I basically changed the bag over for whichever one I wanted to use. If I wanted to use the heavy bag or the light bag. And, you know, I preferred the heavy bag, but the light bag was also good just for practice, just for speed and, you know, without worrying, you know, just technique and stuff. So it was quite good to have both. So that that was the first punch bag right two at the same time but it's the first time I owned my own punch bag and I was very pleased I remember once I was uh, at school in the maths class and I thought about the punch bag at home and I remember I smiled yeah so I that was my first punch bag now I used it every day, every, 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 every day. Uh, in the evening, after school or during the day, you know, holidays and stuff. So for two years, I was using a punch bag solid uh, whenever I could. And it was really useful for getting rid of, I mean, if you think I was, what, that was my 14, to 14 15, two years when I was a teenager, last two years of high school, it was quite a frustrating period. And, you know, it, it was, the punch bag was good for getting rid of uh, excess rage or energy or whatever. And I was still training in karate twice a week, 
So that was good. So I was practicing the karate and stuff uh, in the garden. And when I wasn't, and I used to go running every, every day in the summer, in the mornings. So it was, you know, it's a fairly good time from that perspective. I had something that I was passionate about that I loved so that was karate kind of was my first love in a sense and then I left school I was still 15 but it was you know my 16th year in a sense so I left school in April and I was 16 in August and the family dynamic changed so I was no longer living in the house I no longer had use of the punch bag or the weights I still went to the gym a little bit but you know I had this job that meant I was working evenings most weeks most days which meant I couldn't go to karate and you know I was always in in the back of my mind I'm going to go back I'm going to go back and I'd see my karate instructor and he'd say, when are you coming back, Jason? And I said, I don't know. Get off my back, leave me alone. <laughs> I didn't say that. And uh, But I never went back. So that was kind of the end of my karate career. And I didn't use a punch bag at all. For years and years and years. I'm trying to think the next time that I used a punch bag. Probably. I didn't use a punch. No, I did use a punch bag at a gym that I went to in 1996. So, wow, that's quite a long time. It's nearly 10 years, really. Um, Between, well, yeah, 10 years. So I didn't use a punch bag for 10 years. And I started going to this gym in London. And it was uh, run by an ex-Mr. Universe. Lovely man. And as well as all the weights, it was a really good gym. It also had a punch bag. So I used to get on the punch bag regularly. So that was good. But I didn't own a punch bag. So I just used to go on there. And then. So I used to go there for a couple of years. Um, Didn't do any. Didn't have access to any punch bags again until about 2002 and I was living in a place that had a gym downstairs and there was a punch bag so I used to use a punch well there was it wasn't always up but it was in a cupboard so I used to ask if I could get it out and he said what I said the punch bag he said oh okay and the man who was working at the gym he taught me some kickboxing moves and like how to kick the bag and stuff so that was that was quite nice so I did that for a few months went in there quite regularly and the next time I used a punch bag again I didn't own my own punch bag but I used I started doing Wing Chun Kung Fu in 2004 and there was I think there was a couple of punch bags in that gym it was a big big old building and that was good so the Wing Chun we were learning that and but then the punch bag was there just to practice punches and kicks and I broke my rib during one of the exercises where we were elbowing each other in the chest which seems a bit of a silly thing to do but we did have pads on but it missed the pad and it went to the side of it and cracked my rib 
So I wasn't able to train for about six weeks. But after a couple of weeks where it started to heal a bit, I went along and uh, he had me doing, practicing kicking. And, you know, and then eventually I I was punching the bag. But I had to wait for my rib to heal enough to do that. And, um... What one once, and I know it's it wasn't really me, but it was me. I was there, but I punched the bag, and the bag broke off of the chain and smashed against the wall. It looked like I was a super, had superpowers, super strength, but I guess it must just have been loose. So I punched it, and I wish I'd had that on tape, because if that would have been, it would have looked so good, like I was super strong. So that was that, so I was using a punch bag then. In 2004, uh, I moved into a place in 2005, and there was another little speedball punch ball thing which was stood up and it was a bit bendy and you'd punch it. It was like a football on top. So I used to practice with that. I don't know where that came from, but it was in the garden, so I used to play with that. And then 2007, I moved to do my degree course to a different town. And I think 2008... I started going to boxing, to a boxing class, an amateur boxing class twice a week. So I was using the punch bags there. There's lots of punch bags there. And I also bought myself a stand-up punch bag, which was basically it stands up on its own, but it's got a base, a big, big plastic base that you fill with water or sand or concrete or whatever. And it bends, it comes back, but it's a big, strong, heavy thing. So I had one of those in the garden. So I had that. I used to go on that most days. And then I left there in 2011. And I moved into a place for a year. So I didn't have a punch bag then. But I did start doing taekwondo. And so I was, there was no punch bag or anything, but, you know, I was looking to get one at some point. So after a year, I moved to a different place and I got myself another one of those big stand up punch bags. Because I didn't bring it with me, I just left it in the garden. I forgot about it. So I bought another one and that was good. So I, I had that for a couple of years. No. Yeah, about a couple of years, I had that in the kitchen. A little kitchen area, and there was one room in the kitchen. It was quite small, but it was enough. It was just enough room to play on the punch bag, and I'd get on it every day for like an hour or something. And then I moved to here, and... After about a year, I don't know if it was a year or two years, I bought a punch bag for this for this place. And it is a bracket that hangs off the wall. I mean, literally is hanging off the wall. It's, it's broken. So I need to fix it or something or find another way. But it's a heavy bag and it's on the wall behind me. So I've had that for two or three years. So that's good. I like to play around on there. Yeah. So I don't know how many punch bags that is that I've had. There's a few. A few different ones that I've played with over the years. But it's it's fun. You know, it's fun to... I think it's quite good for strength, upper body strength, I think. And it's just... It's just fun. So, yeah, that's the history of punch bags in my life. 
I'm thinking of getting another stand-up one because I mean, it's good because when you're not punching it, it's telling you jokes. Da -da 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 -da. Boom, boom. So I might, I might get one of them rather than have one hanging off the wall. But I'll see. So that's it. That's the end of this boring podcast about punch bags. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.